Hello. So, you may have noticed the algebraic rules for concavity seem fairly familiar and are sort of eerily similar to the rules for increasing and decreasing, right? We talked about stressing that it was positive or negative rather than the exact value in order to determine if it was sort of concave up versus concave down. And sort of a similar sort of thought process, right? If you were thinking, okay, well, we talked about, you know, positive, negative first derivative. And so the next thing we really wanted to know about were these like critical points and what they could represent. And we talked about extrema, right? So you're like, oh, well, you know, I wonder if this sort of pathway makes sense in the second derivative case. So if this occurred to you, and I'm just going to assume it did, <laughs> then good. <laughs> so this is exactly the sort of thought a mathematician would have. So they would sort of look at this and look at these parallels and say, okay, what about if the second derivative is zero? What is this, right? So for the first derivative, we saw that these were called critical points, right? They had the potential to be these maximums and minimums. So what about the second derivative? And when that's zero, do we have any sort of parallel there? So these values where the second derivative is zero, the have indeed the potential to be something and the thing with sort of we call this is the points of inflection. So it's sort of a strange thing to think of initially, which is why it's sort of weird to jump into this directly, but hopefully by the end of this, right, this video, we're gonna to try to get a nice intuition about what these things are and sort of why we care about them. So remember concavity, we usually think of this as bending the graph, you know, upward or downward, but the same graph, right, the same function could have segments that are concave up and sort of segments that are concave down, and somehow you have to go from one to the other, right? So sort of a natural place to start is to ask yourself, what does the transition look like between those two things? So taking as an example, right, a sketch of a graph here, we have a segment that is concave down, so going from A to B, right, this is a downward concavity, and going from B to C, this is an upward concavity. But at B itself, it's sort of concavity neutral, right? Like there's, it's going from one to the other. So this is one of those points that we are calling points of inflection. So point of inflection is really just a term we use to be sort of the point that transitions from one to the other, okay? Just like how we had extrema, right, maximum or minimum, is a point that transitions from increasing to decreasing or decreasing to increasing. But here, right, we think of maximum in a lot of different contexts. Here, point of inflection is, at least for now, a seemingly artificial term. We were going to, we were going to hopefully solve that artificiality here. So what is a point of inflection? Like, Sure, it's where the concavity changes, but who cares, right? Like it's just this math thing. So what does it actually mean? So inflection points typically represent sort of in a business model setting, some sort of paradigm shifting event, something very significant that alters the trajectory of whatever they're modeling, okay? So as a way of an example, COVID-19. So when COVID-19 hit, many countries shut down significant portions of their international trade of their sort of different economic sectors, depending on uh, sort of where they were and what they were willing to do, and shut down trade, uh, among many other things. So if we were to look at sort of a graph that models sort of trade over time or sort of uh, economic growth over time, well, we had sort of a, a recovery period, right, from the crash when we had 2011, right, the 2008 crash, and then 2011, we entered a recovery period. And then 2020, we did the lockdown. So if you look at the point where that occurred, this point here, this COVID lockdown represents this sort of inflection point. It didn't necessarily stop the economy from increasing immediately, but it sharply curved the way that it was going and sort of started trending it the other way, meaning that instead of growing faster and faster and faster coming out of recovery, it's now still growing, but slower and slower, okay? But this is just one of many, 
many sort of examples, and this is sort of on a grand scale. So on a smaller scale, so CDs, right? When the rewritable CD came out, it obliterated the floppy disk, uh, if any of you even know what that is still, but obliterated the floppy disk uh, almost entirely. So uh, another parallel might be like MP3 players pretty much obliterated the CD market, right? As new technology comes out. Um, cell phones, right? So when cell phones came out, it wasn't so much that it killed off another market, although it certainly did, um, but it gave birth to another market, right? We had the, the mobile app uh, writing sort of group, which strictly speaking did exist prior to smartphones, but was nowhere near the massive in industry that it is today. Um, again, same deal, computers in general. So computers have sort of revolutionized businesses, sectors, even entire national economies uh, revolving around how uh, computers are sort of utilized. So as these sort of new technologies come into play, you get these sudden market shifts. And in fact, they're so recognizable as sort of events when you're looking at you know, economic growth, when you're looking at a business model that in the business world, they are often referred to as inflection points or inflection point events um, when you're actually looking at you know, sudden changes in what is happening when you're looking at sort of growth over time or something similar. Okay, so this is what the inflection points sort of represent. It's not necessarily sort of a small term localized event, but some shift in the overall sort of paradigm that is underlying what's happening for that business, for that economy, for any number of things, okay? All right, so what do we do? So we've introduced this idea of an inflection point, which sort of seemed artificial at first. Um, we lended it some geometric interpretation. So we're like, okay, um, you know, on the one hand, we can think of it as this concavity shift, right? And look going from con concave up to concave down or concave down to concave up, but a sort of more real world way of thinking about these things is that they represent these major shifts in a business or economic model that sort of fundamentally change how that thing is doing. So sort of importantly, right, these transition points, they don't tend to represent just simple changes, right? It's not like, oh, we got, you know, a better TV to sell, so we have a slightly higher profit margin or something. This is, that's not going to make an inflection point. They are really intense uh, events where really it almost certainly will make or break whatever that business is, right? If you don't adapt, then your growth is changing its fundamental type, right? Instead of increasing its growth, it's now decreasing its growth until eventually that downward concavity will cause you to go bankrupt, okay? So these inflection points are actually incredibly important and sort of correspondingly um, for a specific business might be more rare, but it turns out that sort of overall at the rate of technology and how it's sort of used ubiquitously, they sort of in society occur a lot, okay? All right, so that is that.